Justice Kagan? Um, Mr. Hunger, I just wanted to go back to the Section 11, Section 12 distinction and give you uh, a chance again to tell me why I might be wrong about the textual differences between the two sections. And again, I want to just put Gustafson off the stage because I think we might just have a difference as to how far it went and what it said. So I count four key differences between the two sections. Um, first, there's no reference in Section 12 to registration. Uh, second, uh, Section 12 clearly covers some unregistered shares because it ropes in Section 3 securities. Um, third, um, Section 12 refers to sales not only by means of a prospectus, but also by means of oral communication, which would suggest that we're outside the world of registration. And fourth, um, Section 12 creates liabilities for sellers who had absolutely nothing to do with the registration statement. So the class of people who, um, uh, uh, who might be liable is very different and is not connected to the registration statement. And what that suggests to me is that the two provisions are targeting two very different things. That one is targeting dishonesty in creating a registration statement, and the other is targeting dishonesty in certain kinds of sales, period with or without a registration statement. So why am I wrong? So Section 12 does refer to, re to the registration requirement, not in so many words, but by definition, when you're talking about a prospectus, a prospectus is uh, directly tied to the registration statement requirement. Section 5, uh, Section 5B2 of the Act specifically says that uh, the obligation to distribute a prospectus arises only with respect to I think that was my number three. It says prospectus or oral communications. So we're clearly dealing in a world here in which um, it might be a prospectus or it might be something else. Well, I'm trying to take them one at a time, Your Honor. The, the, the argument that Section 12 doesn't refer to a prospectus, to, to, a re to the registration requirement is incorrect because liability is predicated at least with respect to the first part of the liability provision on the prospectus requirement. And again, this prospectus requirement is limited to and applies only with respect to a security, to any security with respect to which a registration statement has been filed. That is the definition that such security in Section 5B refers back to any security with respect to which a registration statement has been filed, and, and, and such security is the only security as to which there's an obligation to distribute a prospectus. And this court said in Gustafson, that's what prospectus means in Section 12. It means the prospectus that's referred to in Section 5B, which is to say any, the prospectus that has to be distributed for any security with respect to a registration statement has been filed. So there is a clear and unambiguous direct link between prospectus in Section 12 and the registration statement in Section 5, and only registered securities are subject to that requirement. This Court said that in so many words in Gustafson. So with respect to oral communication, again, what this Court said in Gustafson, what the Courts of Appeals have said under no or socius or whatever that um, canon of construction is, that oral communication can't mean every oral communication because given that prospectus is limited to the prospectus re referenced in Section 5 and applies only to registered sh shares, it would dramatically expand the, the scope of liability in a bizarre way if the, the only misrepresentations in a, written, in a writing that were actionable were in the, in the prospectus applicable only to the registered shares, but then like oral communications opened the door to all sorts of uh, suits based on oral communication. So this court in Gustafson indicated, and the courts of appeals have consistently held, oral communication means an oral communication relating to the prospectus, not some un unmoored type of oral communication. So again, if it has to relate to the prospectus, that means it's tied to the registration requirement. Um, you asked about, you, you made the Section 3 point. All I can say, as I've said before, when Congress creates a liability provision, that on its face would not apply because it, to exemptions because there are exemptions. And then it says, oh, but this particular category of exemptions we want to bring back in to the scope of liability. It is reasonable to infer that they didn't bring in the other category of, of exemptions, the Section 4 exemptions, that they didn't include in that parenthetical as, as securities are going to be covered by Section 12, uh, even though they're normally exempt. 
And so the inclusion of one category of exemptions and the exclusion of another category of exemptions strongly supports the conclusion that the second category of exemptions remains exempt. You had one other point. Uh, Justice Gorsuch. Justice Kavanaugh. 